us for the coming of Jesus. Is that biblical? Yes. Where is it in the Bible? Revelation. Where in the Bible? Chapter 14. What verse is in the Bible? Verse is what? 6 to 12. Now, you know what that is right there? What is that? God is getting ready to pour out his vow upon the earth. Look what this says. Great Controversy 464. It says, now withstand the widespread declension of faith and piety. There are true followers of Christ. Where? And she's been talking about the Sunday churches. She's been talking about the Babylon Catholic Church, the Baptist Church, the Presbyterian. She says in all these churches, something has happened to them. But she says, in these churches, there are what? True followers of Christ. Now, we're going to find out that, that, that there's something that's going on in Babylon that gives us evidence that, my brothers and sisters, that the revival and reformation must take place now or it will never happen. It must take place now. No question. Now is the time. And when I said, I'm not just making it up. I mean, when Jesus came on the scene and said, it's time, the time is fulfilled, he knew very specifically something had happened. He had studied the prophecies and knew that when the, when the word came to him as he, was in, as he was in his carpenter shop, they said, there's a man preaching out in the wilderness. Jesus immediately said, all right, brushed off those wood, wood chips. Got up, put, it, put his hammer down, put that tool down. He said, the time is fulfilled. I love it. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, and when we understand Jesus, you and I, and when we look at Babylon, that means the seven of his church must brush off the chips of apostasy and say it's time to finish the work. And we can never finish the work without finishing the reformation. Jesus started it. We must finish it. Through the grace of God. It says that true followers of Christ in these churches and before the final visitation of what? What are the final visitation of God's judgments? They are contained in the what? Seven last plagues. Is that in the Bible? Yes. Revelation 15 chapters 15 and 16 tells us of these seven last plagues and the judgments of God. The wrath contained in them. It says and the final visitation of God's judgment upon the earth. There will be before this a what? Among the people of the Lord. Such a what? Revival and a primitive godliness as has not been witnessed since apostolic times. So we're told something's going to be happening out there in the churches. But then God must do something in his church. He must bring about a revival and reformation of primitive godliness that has not been witnessed since apostolic times. And when this takes place, God will recognize it by pouring out his what? His spirit. In what? Outpouring, we call that the what? The Bible calls it the what? The latter rain. You read about it in Joel 2. You read about it in James 5. Upon the children, upon his children. Now, what happens? As the first revival reformation among God's people, then the spirit of power will be poured out in the latter rain. When that takes place, the third part of this takes place. It says, at that time, many will do what? Separate themselves from those churches. And which the love of this world has supplanted the love of God for God and his word. In other words, Babylon is falling. You remember Revelation 18? And the cry is made. Let's go over to Revelation 18 very quickly. Go to Revelation chapter 18. Revelation 18. Amen. The Bible says beginning in verse 4 of Revelation 18. In verse 2 it says he made a cry that Babylon is falling. In verse 4 it says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying what? Come out of her who? My people, that you be not partakers of what? Her sins and that you receive not of her what? Her plagues or the judgments. In other words, God is going to bring the people out of Babylon before he pours the final judgments and the seven last plagues. Does it make sense? And so this must happen first. But listen, those people can never come out until first they hear the loud cry. Am I right or wrong? And the loud cry will never be given until we receive the what? The latter rain. And the latter rain will never be poured out until we first have a what? Revival and reformation. And my brothers and sisters, do you know that when Babylon completely falls, it's too late for a revival and reformation. And what I'm going to show you today, this morning, by God's grace is that Babylon is almost completely fallen right now. The Bible shows us, I want to tell you what we're going to study before we study it so you don't miss the impact or the force of the study. Are you with me? We're going to show you from the Bible that the Bible tells us when Babylon started to fall 
And the Bible identifies when Babylon hits the ground. You're talking about ground zero? The Bible is going to tell us when Babylon hits ground zero. And when Babylon hits ground zero, guess what? That is the signal to give the loud cry. Then the angel comes down and announces Babylon has just fallen. So the fall of Babylon is the signal to give the loud cry. But if we don't have the latter rain, how can we give the loud cry? And if we don't have the revival reformation, you think that God is going to pour out his spirit upon a broken sister? The Bible says broken cisterns can hold what? Our church is broken. Our institutions and facilities are broken. And Jesus must bind up our wounds and a revival and reformation before the Holy Spirit is poured out in the latter rain. We're told that not one will ever receive the latter rain while there's one defect upon his character. Earl of Writings, page 71, says that those who share in the latter rain must overcome every sin and besetment. There's a preparation of revival reformation. And the truth be told, none of us in this room is ready. And it's amazing. Sometimes we think it's enough just to come to a meeting like this. Listen to me. You know, some people come to this meeting not to hear the truth. They come to the meeting and see who else is here. And instead of listening to the message, they're looking around the room. Why, why are you watching who's coming outside? What, what are they going to do for us? Look at Jesus. Look at the word of God. You see, the devil is intent upon distract, distracting us and diverting us. Why? Because he knows that should we see this truth, revival, reformation, so the devil must prevent it. And this is why right now he made Facebook. People are saying they're spending time, many people spend hours upon Facebook, saying they're doing religious things and don't even spend 30 minutes upon their knees. My brothers and sisters, listen to me. It's going to take much more time with Jesus. How can we give the devil 16 hours of our day and think that we're going to become like Jesus? I gave us 16 because I give some of us eight hours of sleep. Some of us don't even get that. And we may give Jesus 30 minutes. Can you imagine? It, the devil himself don't even believe you believe that. It's illogical. Insane to believe that you can give the devil 16 hours and only give Jesus 15 to 30 minutes. And all of a sudden with a magic wand, you're going to be changed. And do you know, I don't care how much information we have up here. That doesn't mean we're going to be ready. To him that knoweth to do good and do if it not, to him it is sin. James 4, 17. And if you be, if the truth be told, if you were to see our secret lives, things that we know we shouldn't be eating, and we wait till no one else is there, and then we come to meeting acting like we're reformed. <laughs> How are you going to reform the church if your own home is not reformed and die? Thinking that you're, oh, we're going to help somebody get some reform in dress and some reform in music, and you yourself are listening to the same music of Babylon. On your CDs, in your car, brothers and sisters, God must help us inside, from the inside out, that there's a complete revival and reformation. What do you say? And I don't know about you, but I need the power of Jesus to change me. Now, my brothers and sisters, this says, at that time, many will separate themselves from those churches in which the love of this world has supplanted love for God and his word, many both of ministers and people. Now notice, in the other churches, do you know we're told that many of the ministers of Babylon are going to hear the three angels' messages and come out while many Seventh-day Adventist ministers are picking up their messages and are going to be lost. Can you imagine we have ministers that are trying to imitate T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, Benny Hinn, and all these other so-called first-day ministers. And do you know that, that some of them are going to hear this message and say, why were you following me when you had the truth? And you, following him, left the church, following Babylon. Listen, my friends, the seven Adventist church will never become Babylon. And any man that says the seven Adventist church is Babylon, you know that the devil is speaking through him. God has not called us to come out of the seven Adventist church. This is God's church. The church of Seventh-day Adventism can never be charged with being Babylon. But let me tell you something. Don't speak too quickly. She can be charged with being caught with DUI. You know what DUI is. Some, some people right here in Atlanta, you see them all over the street. You know what DUI is? Driving under the influence. 
Do you know that right now our denomination is being driven under the influence of the wine of Babylon? And only the truth can sober us up so this wine can get off our breath, can get out of our books, can get out of our schools, can get out of our homes so there can be a revival and reformation of primitive godliness that has not been witnessed since apostolic time. Listen, Babylon is falling. Tell Larry Biquette, we don't need his financial information. Tell Dave Ramsey's, we don't need his crown priest. Jesus has given us something better. Tell him we don't need Babylon's education. We don't need Babylon's medicine. We don't need Babylon's way of life. Come out of her, my people. Babylon is fallen. Do you think that we can use the music of Babylon? That we can take Lionel Harris, B.B. and C.C. Winans, bring them to our church and think that that's going to be a revival and reformation? Babylon can't revive the remnant. It takes a message from Jesus that comes from the most holy place. And Babylon has never been there. For Babylon is fallen. Now, my brothers and my sisters, all that's going to take place. But do you know that many of those ministers are faithful? Living up to all the truth they know. It says many both of what? Ministers and people, not hatingly, but what? Gladly accept those great truths which God has caused to be proclaimed at this time to prepare a people for what? What truth is it that God has sent to us to prepare a people for the soon coming of Jesus? What truth? The three angels of Revelation 14. After that, the harvest comes, Jesus comes, and they're ready. Now, my brothers and my sisters, the reason why this is significant, I'll never forget, we were doing some meetings a few months ago. We was at one place, and they said, listen. You can't preach so hard about the Roman Catholic Church. Seventh-day Adventists. They said, this, you can't talk like this. Do you know what happened at the end of the meeting? They were upset. At the end of the meeting, some people were excited. But at the end of the meeting, a Roman Catholic was at the meeting. Still a Roman Catholic. He came up to me and he said, I've never heard it so straight. How can I get some more? Come on, brothers and sisters. The Seventh-day Adventist is the one that's afraid of this, not the Roman Catholic. The Listen, the majority of true Christians are not in the Seventh-day Adventist church. They're in the Catholic church, Baptist church, Protestant churches that are going to church on Sunday, never heard this truth, while the greatest devils are in this church waiting to be shaken out, and a revival and reformation must take place. My brothers and sisters, we've got to exalt this truth. Look at what it says. They're going to gladly accept it. It's because we don't understand what we have. So what is the devil going to do? Watch now. It says, the enemy of souls, the devil, desires to do what? What does he want to hinder? He wants to hinder the loud cry that's going to get these ministers and members in the world out of Babylon into the remnant church so they're prepared for the coming of Jesus. He wants to hinder this, and he must stop then the Spirit of God from being poured out. One way to stop the latter rain from being poured out is to try to prevent the what? Revival and reformation. So he wants to stop all this. So what does he do? The enemy of soul desires to end this work. And before the time for what? Such a movement shall begin. In other words, before that revival takes place. Before the latter rain is poured out. Before the loud cry is given to bring the people out of battle into the church. And prepare for the coming of Christ. It says before that should take place, Satan will endeavor to what? Prevent it by what? introduce and account of it. Is he going to prevent it? No, but he wants to prevent it. So when we see the counterfeit, we know that God now is bringing the true. Are you with me? I'm going to show by God's grace that the counterfeit is already on this scene right now. It says, in those churches which he can bring under his deceptive power, he will make it appear that God's special blessing is what? So this is a false Holy Spirit poured out in his churches, Satan's churches. There will be manifest what is thought to be what? Great religion. Remember this, brothers and sisters. Great religious interests. Multitudes exalt that God is working marvelous for them when the work is that of what? So we're told that there's going to be another spiritual movement inside of the Babylonian churches. And when that spiritual movement takes place, this is the last thing before the revival and reformation among the people of God. And it's happening right now. It says, under religious guise, Satan will seek to extend his influence over the Christian church. That means then before this revival, the true one must come to what? The counterfeit. 
Now, my brothers and sisters, if we see the counterfeit, that means that it is time, completely time, for the finishing of the final revival reformation. Does it make sense? Oh, yeah. You understand what we're getting ready to study? Does it make sense? Oh, yeah. Now, let's see. 